This is Closer to the Fire from the Voice of the Martyrs Canada with a focus on the persecuted church. The levels of violence against Christians in India from Hindu extremists is intensifying. This deadly campaign coincides with an Indian government's agenda to turn the country into a Hindu nation. And that has resulted in Christians facing an increase in religiously motivated persecution. The four states of Jharkhand, Uttar Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Chhattisgarh are now the most dangerous places for Christians in India, where beatings, arrests, church destruction, and at times even death are regular occurrences. And now here's just one example of the many stories that we report on from the Voice of the Martyrs about persecution in India. Now, in this particular case, acting on accusations from Hindu nationalists, Police recently raided the gathering of the New Life Fellowship Ministry in Raipur, that is the capital city of Chhattisgarh State. Now, the complainants went with the police and attempted to enter the church, but were prevented from doing so. The officers then requested that Pastor Haresh Sahu report to the local police station. So after the service was completed, Pastor Haresh went to the police station and he brought with him two other men. Now, when the three Christians arrived, a mob of approximately 200 Hindu militants assembled outside the building and began shouting anti-Christian slogans. Now, inside, Pastor Haresh was informed that a complaint had been issued against him, accusing him of indulging in religious conversions. Now, as the police were questioning the men, the mob stormed into the station. During the attack, the two men with Pastor Haresh on Kush and Prakash situated in the front and were badly beaten. But Pastor Haresh was relatively unharmed. The police officer had also been manhandled in the brawl. Reflecting on the incident, one pastor said, if Christians are not even safe in the police station, what can we expect? Arrests have been made against just two of those involved in participating in the attack. And joining me to talk about the increase of persecution in India is Nitin Siddhar, and he is a Christian leader in central India, and his organization is called Dinbandu Ministries, which means friend of the poor. Nitin, thank you for joining me on Closer to the Fire. I'm very glad that I could be able to talk to you and share what is happening here in India. Yeah, and there's so many things going on. And, and as we talked about right off the top of the program here, is at a police station, you had three Christians being attacked in the police station. What was your reaction to that? We are very saddened by the incident that took place in the police station. It, they are not one. There are several in, incidences that has taken place in last uh, four or five months. Even during the lockdown time, um, uh, it, it was a government-sponsored attack on churches. And it was uh, you know, protection given by the government. Uh, to the militant group who are uh, going in churches, going in police station, going in their homes, and trying to um, terrify and beat the pastor. And it's many times those uh, incidences were shown on the TV live. It means the government knows that and government want to see Christian leave this country. And at times it appears that the government and the police aren't doing a lot. Is that on purpose? They want to polarize the vote. They want to, it is all political. When you go according to belief system, the Brahmin uh, scripture, Vedas cry for salvation. And Jesus is the savior. People, those who understand the books, those who read Bible and other religious books, there should not be any threatening situation to anybody because Jesus came to seek and save the lost. And he talked about love, brotherhood, serving, caring for each other. He's a compassionate. And the God who died for us, for, mm -hmm. our, for our sin's sake on the cross, he cannot be a threat to anybody. Neither, neither his follower cannot be a threat to any community. It is all political. Uh, raised by people, this issue to terrify people, keep minority under constant threat and fear so that they can uh, unite other, other group together. So they want somebody anyway. So they create 
enmity uh, between community uh, uh, so that uh, there will be always tension so when we hear about of course the bjp which is like a nationalistic hindu government and there are the radicals uh, is that uh, the sentiment among most hindus in india or is that just a small segment that feel that way it is small segment of the politi- political party uh, and they are uh, they are all came out of rss is the rashtriya swayam swayam sevak sang those are the people who, who plan the strategy for every election and uh, now the up election uttar pradesh election is a big a bihar election is coming up and other states so they want some kind of issue where people will forget about whatever not happen and they want to divert their focus on something on the non issues and uh, so they can hide uh, that they have not done the things they should have done for people in covid and uh, uh, when the lockdown situation was there there were hardly any help for the migrant labor mm-hmm. those who were walking miles and miles from one place to from cities to back to their home we have seen we had a roadside kitchen and we have seen that people were suffering there will be no transportation people were yeah, women were giving delivery on the roadside yeah. and in few years few hours they have to walk and when we have seen all those things and we stood with them they so those are the things and the the, the employment rate is gone down small business uh, is completely gone the factories are running on only 20% Uh, youth are finding very difficult education is chaos because they want to bring their ideology inside the education so so they are focusing only on religious aspect not the overall development of the community or people of india and creating enmity between muslim enmity between christian enmity between dalit and tribal so this government doesn't consider other people they consider other community as a subhuman that is the fault of their belief system and they are acting that the superior race and they should be ruling and running the country do they really believe like say the bjp and i mean i guess it's hard to know the motivation of some people but to, is that really the goal to turn india into a hindu nation or is it more about politics and staying in power or is it maybe a combination of all those things no they want to keep india under their power one thing and they want to bring the manu's rule the manu was their guru and he gave the caste system and they wanted to see that caste system uh coming in live and they wanted to be on top so they are creating the system to serve them they want people those who say yes sir and it is a totally dictatorship they want to have in this country so they are trying all different things this is not one they have a think tank and they will do that experiment in one state and see how it going if people rebel against that they will stop or something they will try in other state that's how they are trying to bring brahmanism uh, into the country where they will have dictatorship they have more power and they are increasing more temples they are building people are suffering people don't have they are homeless people they are beggars in the community the uh, the suicidal death among the farmers increase uh, em- employment rate has gone down and the children those who are in villages they don't have any ipad laptop or any smartphone so they are they lost their um, uh the developing year of education and uh, uh, many children uh, out of school because of corona and they don't have uh, electricity sometime whether they don't have poor connection um uh, the internet connection in the villages or the people doesn't have a smartphone so most of education is gone raguraman was the ex government governor of reserve bank and he said in his report that indian children are going 3 years 3 to 5 years they are back now in their education because of the losses so some people those who have money and those who are upper caste 
they have privilege to go in good school and so you see that uh, shining india and suffering bharat like the the ruler people that 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 turn up to sunir is there yeah you've got the ruling people um oppressing the poor and again as you mentioned it's not just the christians it is the muslims the dalits as well that are really suffering Nitin, I want to talk now about uh, the anti-conversion law in India, which is used against Christians and others as well. And a story that we uh, recently reported on seven pastors arrested earlier this month in the state of Uttar Pradesh. And they were accused, as many Christians are, violating the uh, anti-conversion laws, in this case in Uttar Pradesh. And then they were charged with a legal assembly. Now, the pastors had gathered, as many pastors do, for a prayer meeting. They were detained. 50 other Christians were also detained, but they were released. And then at last report, the pastors remained in custody as we're doing this podcast, but their lawyers uh, were working to obtain a uh, bail. So, Nitin, how do these laws continually be abused and used against Christians? Because that's not what these laws were set up for. But it is for their convenience they made those laws so that they can target the minorities and bring threat to them. Uh, polarized vote and show that we are doing uh, this, this funny thing, uh, sorry, uh, it is a uh, difficult thing to see that um, they are cornered. When the persecution comes, uh, Mr. Greg, it is very hard. A P, children, a P, a P, uh, the persecutor uh, attack, uh, beat, uh, abuse, mm -hmm. uh, destroy the property, and many Christians within India doesn't come alongside. So that is the very loneliest period for the pastor who go to I gone 15 times uh, with a physical beating and so many cases and things like today. By the grace of God, there is no case against me. But I have seen the, the part uh, church has to play sometime because the fear that it will happen to me so nobody goes and serves. Mm -hmm. I want to thank um, uh, Voice of Martyr for taking stand and uh, uh, providing help for those families and the pastors and the legal help. The another thing is a, a, when you uh, arrest somebody, the newspaper come in newspaper it, that is printed in front page, and when you are released, nobody knows about that. And why you are arrested, and what what was the reason? And when you try to uh, show that you are innocent, no newspaper uh, put your story. This one side story coming on mm -hmm. and on every time. And media is bribed by the uh, yellow journalism. You can say that they they are bribed, they are controlled by the government because they get ad in the TV and they only bringing uh, accusations uh, and the, when the person release uh, out of jail, if you try to explain yourself, this is what uh, wrong happened to me. I was innocent and because the charges were fabricated and never proven. That story never get. So people have only one side. And another thing is, out of all the persecution, Jesus' name doesn't get discussed. They only want what bad practices are done in the church and some people, what they are doing and luring somebody and bribing somebody. I, and that is throughout India. Those cases never stood in the high court, Supreme Court, never proven any of those. But media create that um, uh, situation or um, uh, understanding in the people's heart or mind that Christians are very bad people. They give money and they, they and nobody talk about Jesus. I said, when I was interviewed by a uh, secular uh, TV uh, channel, and I said, man, we may be having bad attitude. We are not saying that Christians are the best people on this earth. Christians are not perfect, right? Perfect, I mean, perfect, right? We, know, we know that. And, and I just want to pick up on that whole anti-conversion law. And you do, and you talked about it. It you know Christians are accused of bribing Hindus to become Christians. Well, how does that affect the church? Because you know people are coming to Christ from Hinduism. Yes. 
We know that's happening in India and also from Islam and, and nominal tribal religions, Dalits as well. But the reality is people are coming to Jesus. And then that, I guess, for some within the radical Hindu community, that is forced conversion, right? Yes. So how, did, that, so how does that affect the Christians then? I mean, in terms of evangelism and sharing the gospel. Yeah. You have to always build a relationship, not during persecution time, but other common issue you have to take, like a pro-life issue, mm. uh, human trafficking issue. You bring people and form unity on the basis of common program, not on the uh, basis of belief system, but basis of common minimum program where you can work together so that you can have relationship with other people for, for instance, incident, if uh, RSS is a, or a Hindu militant group is is attacking church, and if church has served in the community, the people should come out and support the pastor or the people those who are going to uh, suffering or charges. If that happens, that is a successful of the church because even pastor gone in the in jail, but people are behind to take that. So no matter how hard persecution, we should not stop believing Jesus. We, we need to encourage each other. People, those are. The, another thing is very important, that people on the fence, they want, they are, India is in spiritual transition time, mm -hmm. and they are sitting on the fence and they are looking. When persecution comes, difficulty comes, how church acts. They want to see church coming along side of the people, those who are going to suffering or persecution that time. That is a key test of true love and true faith. When we show that, many will come because there is, there is no one like Jesus. Yeah, man, nobody yes. is, the, 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 nobody um, uh, serve and care. He washed his disciples' feet, but he washed our sin by his blood. There is mm -hmm. no God. There is no deity in Hinduism or any other religion that shows that. But yeah. the, during this persecution time, anti-conversion law it suits government. You make a simple complaint against that. You lure somebody. And he's just he doesn't have to prove. You have to go in police station. There will be charges against you. Just false complaint also. And all these charges they are making uh, using that law there is a flaw in the law and using that to persecute Christian and defaming the church. They cannot defame Jesus, but what they are doing is they are defaming church. Nobody can say anything against Jesus because uh, they don't have word and their religion. When you take uh, Jesus' character and his love, nobody matches there. So when you don't have truth, if you have truth and I have truth, it should complement. Right. But if you don't have truth and I have truth, you bring hate because under because you don't want to humble and accept that you don't have uh, truth with you. You don't have the deity who died for you. So what you are doing, you cannot you cannot touch the God, but you can touch His people, and you can uh, violently uh, try to. Uh, kill people and bring terror, but truth cannot be separated with terror. Right. So it, truth, truth cannot be separated like that. But these laws are uh, making complicated uh, for people. They are not clear. And different officers use that differently, different ways they th think. And it is just for persecuting Christians more, uh, I see, through this law. Very less uh, Muslim cases took place. Majority cases is against Christians. Right, yeah. Now, the and I'm going to ask you just in a moment here just about how uh, the persecution against the church um, is affecting the followers of Jesus. But here's another story and a tragic story that uh, we've been following at the Voice of the Martyrs. A young man named Atish Kumar. Uh, he's a Christian teenager. He was from the northeastern India state of uh, Bihar. And he was attacked with acid. And uh, he was left with severe burns. 
and the reason for the attack and those responsible remain unknown. But uh, commenting, you know, from his brother who said, you know, just prior to this happening, uh, that it was because uh, he and his brother were very active in Christian ministry. And Natisha's family really believes it was the evangelistic work that they were doing in the community. That's why they were attacked. However, the authorities refused to file a case uh, claiming that the 14-year-old, again, the family saying this is absolutely false, as Natish threw acid on himself following a family quarrel. He was transferred to a burn hospital located about 80 kilometers from his village. And despite the best efforts of the doctor, uh, the young believer passed away. When we hear of these kinds of stories, how does that affect the local community and the communities around uh, when they hear these kinds of stories? Anytime there is, there is this kind of attack and when teenagers die like that, uh, community feel uh, very, uh, very sad. The sadness comes uh, uh, among the community. It is not entire village or community wanted to see that kind of attack and death of the young man. Uh, but uh, the other side, when it doesn't get uh, communicated, so people are left with the suspicion, even this uh, cruelty uh, is seen in this kind of incidents. Uh, other side story doesn't come, so people believe, and sometimes there is uh, no courage to stand with the family. Uh, so those stories uh, are buried under the ground. Uh, they wait for time and uh, people forget that because uh, there is uh, no um, uh, clear-cut uh, communication on the, that, what exactly happened. And over and over, one side picture is again, the people will say, oh, this, it was a family matter. And that's why these, uh, these so you, you want to dilute the seriousness of the incident uh, you make a fake story and produce before people. That is also happening. And it's very sad, very sad. And obviously it has a huge impact on the community. Uh, you know, it, it may stop some from sharing the message of Jesus. Yeah. But tell me how persecution, uh, and again, I know India is a huge country, more than a billion people. Uh, the, you know, the church is small, but it is growing. But how is persecution affecting the church when we hear of the attacks, the anti-conversion laws, uh, you know, Christians being in prison? Uh, is, is that strengthening the church or is it causing the church to retreat? Um, no, church, uh, some place when the persecution, like heavy uh, persecution happened, people get beaten and a um, so period of time they go in silent and um, maybe worship discontinue for some time. There's, so there's some intimidation uh, happening at times, yes. right? Okay. Yeah, at, at times. But a few uh, months later or one year later, you will see the growth also. Uh, the Where they are persecuted, uh, somehow God work, uh, he never stopped. And you will see more believers coming out of persecuted area and standing for the Lord. That also happened. We have a very good friend of ours. Recently, we got to know her in a siege in Chennai. Um, for last four years, uh, four months, sorry, last four months, every day, there is a, a report against her in different police station. And that is coming from Prime Minister's office. Wow. People, local people sent to Prime Minister's office and Prime Minister office give it. Every day, she has to go. She is a born again high caste uh, leader, and she is a charter accountant. Her husband is an officer. They have hundred plus uh, believers in their church, and uh, and there's this uh, because she is from high caste, and she is trade to Brahminism. So they are putting cases against her every every day, every altar. She has to go in this position. But once I, heard, I was talking to her, and she said, Nitin, I see every day people coming to know the Lord um, in my church. As I go to police station and come back, there are new people coming. So God didn't stop. And that is encouraging for us to see that persecution happened. It is in the will of the Lord. And we have to welcome that. And we'll, we need to ask God to give grace to go through that. 
nobody like persecution nobody like because it goes against our um, flesh and uh, we all want comfort but when we welcome that in the name of jesus the effect of the pers- persecution goes from your for, from your mind from your heart and you can god give fresh love for the people when it happened to me i had to say lord in your will i will accept this and lord help me to forget and forgive those who are there so you can in it's a one month you walk on same street they are coming from other side and you are going and you can say hello hi or namaskar uh, because god gives you that kind of love uh, to those people and you don't hate them but you are concerned that the people those who you sword by kill by sword that's what bible says mm-hmm. so you see their destruction is there while they are doing this violent thing yeah you know in persecution and and i love the point that you make because we don't glorify persecution in any way it is suffering but god uses persecution and you know from what i hearing you say is that there may initially be some fear uh but especially the believers that are mature and it actually causes people you know to really dig into the bible because the scriptures teach a lot about persecution for righteousness so you know we hearing many stories of india the church is growing but so is the persecution and that's why we need to continue to you know run to the aid of our brothers and sisters so uh, nitin what are some of the things that we can do in terms of helping our brothers and sisters in india and i know that you work with politicians uh you're not only working with persecuted christians but also with the poor as well but how can we help in in the work that you're doing there and uh, to strengthen our brothers and sisters in christ as they're going through these difficult times very good question sir um i would like to take a few minutes to explain that first you can pray for the people those who are going to that god will give boldness inward power to match outward outward circumstances and that is fear and threat once you have that what happens in my personal life when i fought persecution and god gave it is not i fought it is god gave me grace and strength and people those who came there was a time when we got there was nobody to stand with us uh, many nights we were uh, we were alone and uh, they very hardly any support but in those spirit we could understand god gave us mission and message mm-hmm. uh, in our heart those who are going to suffering i should go and serve them be with them stand with them whatever you can give you can help them and you should be generous in your help that's what we tell our pastor we do ourselves the, the thing the persecution happens some of the case i studied um when you are two community and they, if you uh, um this picture that is a one road going and dividing two communities one is responding to gospel and another is not responding to gospel but you are walking in the road you are helping those who are responding to gospel and what happens when you give people those who are responding to the gospel like for water well project you see both community need both the side people need water but we choose those who are responding and those who are not we neglect right. them that is not the right way to do the work we need to show the love of lord whether you respond to the gospel or not we are committed to love you back there's no strings attached yeah yeah that yeah. kind of so if we do unwise this ministry we we do good thing but we do unwisely and we create more problem for the people mm. uh, when you leave the place so those are the thing we need to really carefully do that if both the communities are poor one is responding with not just show enough love and do equally good for them too to show that yeah and it did, that is not your job to bring them into christian it god's job to bring them you have to be sincere lovers of their soul with having christ love in your heart and doing that and asking god lord you through your holy spirit turn their heart to you so those kind of things help the christian ministry um, more in days to come when the kandamal thing happened i challenge key organization in the country saying can we help give me 1000 water well and i will go there 
I will dedicate my three years sitting in the Kandamal and we will do good equally for all the parties and the reconstruct the church. Every church should be supported by different state. If we said, send two trucks load of grain and teens and uh, angles and your team for a couple of one week or two weeks, we had built Orissa and the church in Orissa that is burnt. And people who have shown the love, they were minister who willing to come, political people who willing to come and uh, help us. Uh, those are secular people. So we lost big witness that we don't care when people get persecuted. That is the voice people see. That is the action uh, people see from the church. And that was sad. We lost big witness when we don't rebuild when we don't, don't go back and help those community that has burnt out. So I think we have to work on, as a Christian, to work on this side that when persecution comes, how I'm going to react, how I'm going to pray, how I'm going to serve, and how I want to show the love of the Lord. Hey, we will not leave people alone where we stand. And I just love how you're saying that too. You know, we need to show... Uh, the practical love of Jesus, and then that opens up the door to share the message. Whether you're in India or Canada or any other part of the world, people need to see Jesus in us. Say, yeah, we can talk about it. I mean, think about India, and, and I've been there a few times, is it is a very, very religious country, unlike Canada, which has become more and more secular. So there is that opportunity, you know, to be able to share the gospel if they're open. And if they don't uh, follow Jesus, that's, again, that's not on us. That's on the Lord. He's the one that does the drawing. Uh, Nitin, thank you so much um, for all the work that you're doing uh, in India, uh, you know, serving the persecuted church, serving the poor. God bless you as you continue to work for him. And again, you're doing many things, uh, you know, talking to politicians and, you know, and showing pastors and being an example of what it is to love Jesus. And so, again, thank you for all you're doing. God bless you. Bless you, sir. Thank you. And if you'd Glory like to, to yeah, and, and we want to continue to be able to pray for India. And I'd like you to do that in a moment. I just want to remind people, if you're watching or listening, and you'd like to find out more about what is happening in India, the, the, some of the stories that we've shared, you can go to vomcanada.com. That's vomcanada.com. I will put uh, the website on the show notes. And uh, when you go to that page, you can click on something called Take Action, and you can find the persecution and prayer alert, many stories uh, from India. India coming there. You can also sign up for a monthly newsletter, uh, you know, to hear the stories, not only persecution, but also the victories as well, and how we can help and serve our brothers and sisters in Christ. So brother, can you lead us in prayer for your country of India? Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. You are great and mighty God. We are privileged to work with you for you for your kingdom, Lord. We pray, Father, through this persecution, those who are going to hard time and suffering, I pray, Father, that church is rise up in India, Lord, and go and serve, Lord, uh, these pastors, those who are uh, innocent and who are uh, victims of this, uh, um, the law, anti-conversion law. I pray, Father, you abolish that loss uh, help us to raise awareness among the politicians and the parliamentary and the state leaders to, to take actions against this law and uh, abolish this law. A lot of you pray, Father, that uh, the church in India will not come under the fear, but under the faith. And they will stay, stand and rise up and show uh, your love to the persecuted church law. Lord, we please forgive us when we are timid, when we are fearful, when we don't take action, Lord. When we keep mum, we will don't utter any word, Lord. Lord, I pray that whatever the numbers of Christians in India will able to tell about you every day, Lord, no matter what happened. Lord, we want to see your kingdom. We want to see revival in India. And Lord, we want to see church serving the people, those who are going to difficult times. And Lord, help us to be faithful in praying for those persecuted church, Lord. Help us to 
uh, bring them out of that that state and comfort them and relocate them uh, help their family uh, to uh, to go through uh, the, their development uh, in education or in the job slot i pray father that bring christian leader together in india who will understand the uh, the pain and suffering uh, like you understand uh, that those who are going to persecution lord i pray father uh, you give peace to the people those who are in prison now i pray father that you use them in prison and help them to welcome the persecution in your name lord yes um, and lord help us to release forgiveness those who are persecuting them lord and i pray father and we have seen or and you are faithfulness lord where the church is got persecuted we see thousands and thousands coming to know you lord so lord i pray through our death or through our life we want to see you glorified jesus we want to see you worship mm-hmm. in india lord yes, we lord. pray father that people those who are um, uh, stuck uh, or slave in the false religion lord in ritualistic life i pray father you bring breakthrough lord and let people see you are the savior of this world you are the the redeemer and who 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 can uh, give us uh, um, the peace and who can take us to heaven lord you came from heaven to take back to heaven and that kind of god there is no one in indian scripture father and i pray father that people will see you true loving and living god and i pray father through uh, uh, this time of uh, difficult lord help us to rise up and help us not to come um under the fear but through faith we will rise and walk forward father mm-hmm. i pray the spirit of death fear of death fear of man will be broken in your name mm-hmm. jesus yes, lord. and lord i pray father that give pastor wisdom to bring uh, to build a relationship in the community lord on common minimum program where they can relate to each other share their faith and lord i pray father that pastor will have not only christian supporting but non christian will also support him that kind of testimony you build uh, in the villages in the cities where the church is there lord and i pray father uh, we we don't want to live in isolation but we want to be sharing your love and word lord i pray that uh, your name be glorified in the tv and multimedia and lord in the newspaper help us to write about you. I help us to uh, bring those uh, aspect of your life that uh, will be attract you to the indian community lord a lot help us to love the people of india no matter who they are lord and how worse they are you love them and give us that love lord uh do even as we go through persecution father and our lord i pray the spirit of encouragement to come upon the leadership of india lord mm-hmm. lord we are not going to stop sharing your love and your gospel lord uh, please give courage lord uh, to stand firm lord god we pray that uh, you bless the voice of martyr lord and all the staff and the leaders i thank you lord for their courage to bring the stories before the church so that church can unitedly and fervently uh, pray for the uh, for the persecuted church lord i thank you for their love for india and i pray blessing upon them lord lord god we pray that indian church leader will stand together forget the uh, denominational barriers mm-hmm. and lord um, i pray father the it is not my state or it is his tra- state and that is happening in nepal and other lord all people belongs to you lord and give us that kind of love that anybody is suffering help us to serve them and pray for them and lord encourage them lord we thank you once again uh, that you are bringing many people into your kingdom lord lord mm-hmm. we pray through this persecution let your kingdom come yeah. let you will be done as it is in heaven lord we want to see india will worship you lord one day and we pray father that help us to do a discipleship on regular basis help us to serve wholeheartedly and lord we pray father that you give dreams and vision uh, to modi and even shah and the rss people lord we pray that uh, they will also come to know you lord we don't hate them but we want to pray uh, that you uh, soften their heart 
and speak to them lord you are mighty god and we love you lord and we give you glory honor and praise in jesus name amen Amen. Nitin Sadar, thank you so much uh, for all that you are doing and uh, your team in India. And we will continue to pray for your nation. And uh, God bless you. Just to keep up the good work. I know that, you know, persecution, uh, and I've traveled all over the world uh, meeting persecuted believers. And one of the things that happens is they get tired and they get weary because they're human but yet their spirit is strengthened. You know, and just picking up something you said earlier on, uh, the goal that we're here is to glorify Jesus. And uh, so whatever we're going through, that we glorify Jesus. And I can certainly see that in your life. So again, thank you. God bless you, brother. Thank you. God bless you. And remember, the closer you are to Jesus, and this certainly is the case in India, the closer you are to the fire.